Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to a new video. Ki hal chal? I hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we will make strings a subsequence using cyclic increments. Now, it's simply given that you are given two strings, S1 and S2, string 1 and string 2. Now, in that, in any one operation, in one operation, you can select a set of index indices from string 1 and for each index i in the set which you have chosen, increment string 1 to the next character cyclically. When I say cyclically, which, if, which means if I have A, B, C, D, F, G, H, um, X, Y, Z and like all that stuff, let's say Z. So cyclically after A comes B, after B comes C, after C comes D, after Z comes A. This is the meaning of cyclic nature, right? We have to return 2 if it is possible to make string 2 a subsequence of string 1 by performing the operations performing the operation at most once. Again, the operation itself says choose some indices and then you can make do that cyclic operation. So you have to do that operation at most once which means in one operation choose any set of indices which you want to make them go cyclic at the next character and then apply it and then if you are able to make string 2 equal to string 1 as in sorry string 2 a subsequence of string 1 you are good to go. Now before we go on to any of the jargons of cyclic nature if I would have just asked you that you are given let's say a string 2 let's see sorry you are given a string 1 str1 and then I also gave you a string 2 let's say ad if I asked you is it again forget about cyclic nature is string 2 a subsequence of string 1 or not then how would you have gone about it simply as very again string 2 entirely is a subsequence of string 1 how would you have gone about it simple greedy way that you go iterate from left to right simple check if i get a a again why greedily because even if i have multiple such a's i have multiple such a's but still i want a subsequence yes or a no as an answer that's it so i will check a do i find a a yes i find a a okay go on to next try to search for next then i will go and try to search for a d do i get a d here you will see that okay d is not this d is not this d is not this yeah d is here okay got it now why it is good to search it like this because what if i have a, a again what if i had a, a again then even if let's say d would have been here if d would have been here or let's say if d would have been here and d would also have been here then it is much better that whenever the first occurrence of D comes in, I will say, okay, I will say, okay, I have taken D. Then I will always have a luxury to take other characters. So if I would have taken a D here, there, there was no A after it. So it's always good to take the first possible character which is coming up in the sequence as you are taking the characters. So what we realized is that if there would have been no cyclic nature involved, I will simply iterate again I want all the characters of string 2 should be in sequence in string 1 and to take it I will choose greedily by saying okay choose A the first A which comes up choose it the first D which comes up choose it okay then I was able to entirely iterate on my string 2 which means my string 2 is present in my string 1 as a subsequence. Now the only change in this problem here is that you you have to still do the same stuff. I replace it with the actual problem. You still have to do the same stuff, exactly same stuff. The only change is now as you are comparing the equal characters, earlier you, you, you were comparing D to match exactly with D. Now you can compare equal also, which means as you can see, either I change it, I have to apply the operation at most once see don't confuse in both these statements the below statement says that out of these string one you can choose any indices and increase them okay let's say i i choose this and this so i will increase its cycle to next character b then this will remain as is i will increase it it is d and then 
this statement indicates that apply this thing at most once, which means one index will always be increased at most once. And I can choose any index. So what we simply here realize that if I have this input and if I have this, I have to match against. Earlier I was comparing the characters to be exactly equal. Now I can compare either exactly equal or if I increase this by one, which means if this is a character C, if I increase this by one, again, I'm adding a one, but this is a character, but make sure we convert it. How we convert it? Simply converting this character to also to a number. So C minus A plus one. If I increase this by one, it should become D. How I, I should say it should become D minus A. If that is the case also, then I will still say, okay, they are matching. So we realized that either, either it is equal character, which means either the C, which means either the character, this thing is equals to this thing D, or I should say character, let's say a string one of I, if it is exactly equal to string two of J, either it happens this, which means I don't choose that character to increment, or it should happen like this, which means I increment this character by plus one and it should become equal to this character. Now, the only caveat here is what about Z or I should say what about Z? Because if you do Z is nothing but 26. If I just imagine, okay, okay let's say even if it's 25, again, give any number based on the index you want to give. But if I do a Z minus A plus one, and if I do a A minus A, A minus A will be a zero. Z minus A will give me 25 plus one will give me 26. So, oh, but cyclically, if I have to make sure that this should become equal to this, I have to make sure how we go about in a cyclic fashion, which means if I give you indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if I ask you, if you go to the next index, it should ideally come back to this. How we perform this operation? We perform by simply saying that if I do a i plus one, if I do a mod n, n is the size of the array, n is nothing but six here. So it will come back to zero, which means that if I do i plus one, mod n, mod n, n is six, it will come back. i plus one was what? Six, six mod six is actually zero. Same operation I will apply here. I know that if I do a plus one, it will go to 26. It, will, it was 25 plus 126. So I'll do a mod with 26. So as to simply bring back to a zero. And this is the only change I have to apply. Cool. Let's see the code. It's pretty simple. Again, this is the Java code. This is the C++ code. Also link below description. I simply took two pointers, one to iterate on string one and one to actually iterate on string two. Just making sure that every character of string two should be a subsequence of string one, which means ultimately I should be able to reach the very end of my string two. So let's take this example. Uh, let's, let, let's take C++ code. So I, as I mentioned, I will simply iterate on my string one and I will simply check, okay, is the character equal? If not, then I will jump on and say, okay, for string one, if I add a plus one, again, making us making things cyclic, if it is equal to the string two character, then make sure to increase your J pointer. And if I'm able to reach the end of my J, which means my entire string two was inside my string one as a subsequence. So simply re return a true. If it was never able to reach the end, which means I was never even able to reach my entire string to iteration. So return the false. As you simply iterate on the string one, thus the answer is O of n and no space used, so the space is O of one. Cool, I hope you got it again. It's pretty simple, standard, greedy way how we approach stuff. Bye-bye, take care.